Hi, welcome to Pentecost Today Podcast. I'm your co-host, Steve Mancini, and as always, I'm joined with the Executive Director, Alicia Hartle. Steve, it's great to be here, and all of you who are joining us, we are so humbled to be able to be together from all across the nation, all around the world, and today we have a very special guest, Darling Preville from the Haitian Renewal, living in New York City. And before we invite Darling into conversation, it would be wonderful if we can open in prayer, and then we'll start with a quote from the Doctrinal Commission. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we yield ourselves to you. We surrender this time to you. And Father, even as we yield ourselves to you, we just acknowledge, Father, that you have given us everything. We give it all back to you now, Lord, our time. Lord, this episode, all that you desire to pour out upon us through the work and the power of your Holy Spirit. And Father, even as we come together, we do ask that you would send your spirit to fall afresh on us, that the life and the work and the ministry of Jesus Christ would be made manifest here in our midst and to all those who are joining us. Lord, that there would be a coming of the kingdom of heaven in and through us. We pray all of this for your glory and honor, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. Before we, as always, before we get started with the guest, we like to read a little something from Baptism in the Holy Spirit. So again, this is from the Doctrinal Commission. And like we keep saying, if you are interested in learning more, please go out to our website, PentecostTodayUSA.org, where you can see the books and you can order the books and see you know different resources to understand the charismatic movement. So again, we encourage you to go out to the website. But as always, I'm going to start off by reading just a little bit from uh, Baptism in the Holy Spirit. The cross and resurrection of Christ come to be known as not only an event of the past, but a present source of grace, enabling us to die, to sin, and live for God. There is a newly awakened attentiveness to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, which leads to a deeper obedience to the Lord. So the last time we read, we talked about that, you know, being free from the slavery of sin. This kind of... One thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is when we talk freedom, because the Bible will even talk, I think, you know, if you're going to be a slave, be a good slave. If you're, you know, so mm. people say, well, how can you, how do you rectify these? The slavery is something deeper. It's that slavery to constantly sinning and being released from that. And I think people don't, they don't understand that. You're trying to accept God and you get the Holy Spirit into you to chase that so you're not falling constantly we will always sin it's written for all have sinned and call you know fall short of the glory of the lord so we'll always sin but the key is to not be a slave to sin yeah you know steve i think that kind of is the mark of the transformation of the spiritual journey and that we are moved from sin and slavery to sin to life in the spirit radical freedom radical deliverance from evil and it's there's more there's always more new levels of freedom new levels of intimacy with the father the son and the holy spirit and you know one of the people i meet people from all across the nation all around the world one of the people who i am undone by how life in the spirit just overflows not only in conversation, but in her life and ministry, is is our guest today, Darling Preville. And we just see uh, these movements of, from the prompting of the Holy Spirit, this life in the Spirit and the fullness of life in the Spirit lived out through her. And so, Darling, we want to welcome you. We're so humbled to have you here with us. I know for years, you, you your sister, your your mother, your, your whole family has been involved with the Haitian Renewal in many different ways. And you're joining us now from New York City. And so welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a humble uh, position to speak about the work of Christ mm -hmm. who the Renewal has done, not only for me personally, for the whole ministry. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're humbled to have you here with us. And darling, if you can share just a little bit of your background, where you're born and raised, and then just kind of that first encounter with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, 
I was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I always say that I was born on a special day, October 7, the Feast of Our Lady mm. of Rosary. And uh, I went to school. Um, the Feast of Marie is a, a, a nun, a, a Catholic school. I received communion uh, there. And I had a very special uh, experience during my communion time. I'll never forget that the teacher uh, told us, after you receive communion, stay quietly and listen to what God is telling you. Mm -hmm. uh, I say that the charismatic renewal was not known by that teacher, but I can see it was in by the Holy Spirit. Mm. At that age, I was only eight years old, and uh, the following day I received confirmation because that was the normal thing to do at that time. Okay. Uh, it leaves confirmation for years after. And after I received confirmation, she said, uh, speak to God, and then you will hear His voice answering you. That was a very, I believed it. Hmm. Um, so after that, I stay quiet and then I start talking. And then she say, you're talking in the crazy language that we don't know. And I leave <laughs> it alone. And I never said anything. And I kept my mouth shut. Since then, after I received communion, I don't talk out loud. I don't do my prayers out loud. But I never knew until maybe 20 years later, mm -hmm. if it's not more, that uh, I encounter the charismatic renewal, mm -hmm. which as I'm looking back and I say, Lord, probably you, I had that gift. I was prayed over. I went to the whole, to a couple of seminars. But before that, we used to go as fun time because my mother used to take us to Notre Dame University for the charismatic gathering and then we used to consider that every Memorial Day weekend it was like a vacation because I used to invite my friends to go with us so we will not hang out with the old people. I will never say that again. <laughs> uh, but, uh, we enjoy the company. The music was very loud, mm -hmm. very inspiring. The teaching that we had was very moving. I was a CCD teacher. I was involved in youth group. I was involved in Girl Scout. I was involved in, uh, I was a choir. I was a lecturer. I always participated in church activities. But the renewal take all these things, it's like I see God was leading me to something deeper. Mm. That's the way mm. I look at it. And it's a grace I humbly accept because my views are completely different because of uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I, in serving uh, the youth, I remember Father, uh, one of the priests, took us to... Steubenville University. Mm -hmm. So for many years, Steubenville, I participate in the with the youth as a chaplain, and also it was very active that uh, we joined youth prayer group, and we opened a youth prayer group at Saint Ignatius. Uh, that's where the adults, Haitian, were gathering most of the time until they branched out to different parishes. That was the starting point. At that time, we used to encourage the parents to bring their kids mm -hmm. with them to the prayer meetings, not knowing that was going to lead to have a good base for uh, the youth mm -hmm. to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And also, at that time, that based on a, a lot of uh, young people were coming and they love the way that we pray, the way that uh, we teach them. Uh, my sister is a spark 
God bless her soul, mm. who was uh, oh, like a lightning. Whenever she's in, she was on fire. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And me, I was more into teaching, breaking the words with them. But for animation and things like this, she was the one. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, I branched out between the young adults, the little kids. And when we started in 2009, 2005, I believe, 2005, mm -hmm. when uh, the charismatic, Haitian charismatic decide to do their own convention, it was easy for us because we were so already ready to minister to young people mm -hmm. and sometimes we have 300 350 yeah. attendees yeah. and all eight groups so those that we already were with us uh, already ministering to young people through gatherings because for years we were doing like uh training mm -hmm. for them for the Haitian community without telling them it was based on the charismatic gifts that we were using. Yeah. It was just straight for leadership. So uh, it was about a good 20, 25 at times, sitting there for the whole year, every month we meet, and they serve in different parishes. And this, by doing so, they were able to transmit Mm -hmm. the message mm -hmm. that we have a theme for the year. Yeah, you know, uh, darling, the work, the ministry really that the Lord has been doing with you over the years and your sister and other family members, I was just um, with you and with some of the youth in the Haitian Renewal a few months ago. It was so awesome to see the fruit of the work of your hands all the way from, you know, little ones up through those who are young adults and um and every age in between it was glorious and you know our office receives phone calls from people who are parents grandparents great grandparents and they're saying i want this for my children i want this for my grandchildren i want this for my great grandchildren this fullness of life in the spirit this peace that surpasses all understanding this joy that is unending this unconditional love that that I walk in the fruits of the Holy Spirit that, that are made manifest in abundance when someone really yields and, and receives uh, the grace of baptism in the Holy Spirit and lives life in the Spirit. But, you know, um, I, as a child, I was surrounded by prayer meetings and family and really even people at our parish in our church. My experience was similar maybe to many little ones who were there at those prayer meetings. But what is incredible about what you just shared is that you recognized a need to create something specifically for the children, specifically for the youth, specifically for the young adults. And we, you know, we're doing a lot of work to do that now to really engage younger generations in different ways. But it's it is awesome to see how the Lord has already developed that ministry really since 2009 just incredible darling it's beautiful to hear that yes um it's getting a, a little harder these days mm. because of uh this this covid and all the up and down in the diocese the regulations and everything else that's uh, but we still have hope because there was still a group that's hungry mm -hmm. for God and uh, we try every possibility by doing day of recollection for them do some events with them and incorporate it, the work of the Holy Spirit what God can do but there's still more that has to be done mm -hmm. and uh, more that has to be done and that's the reason that I work with a group of young mothers that single mothers they are, I have to say that. That's my little group of faith formation that we started when the kids were receiving First Communion. And I was wondering, how oh, do they really understand mm. what Eucharist is mm -hmm. and all? 
And I work with the parents. And I talk to them, encourage them. They are the first teachers of their children. Because my parents, I'm blessed to have faithful, devoted mother who was a Catholic. My father was a Pentecostal pastor. Uh, never break away, didn't let us participate in all the sacraments with us. I have to say that it was a blessing. But when I saw parents who need to be strengthened in their faith mm -hmm. in order to fight the good fight, because it's a fight that we will never stop because the other one always trying to grab our children away from us, but it's through the power of the Holy Spirit to prayer, to learning the Word of God, through concentrating and asking Mary to assist, to be a mother for them, because a lot of people come from broken families who didn't have nurturing parents, who didn't have nurturing mm -hmm. mothers, who doesn't have a relationship with the church, because they just go through the motion of doing things. But when you break the word for them, when we share the love of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, the, how much they can have an easy and peaceful life. No matter how difficult the situation is, God is sovereign. Mm. Mm. Darling, your family is incredible. I think for those who are listening who say, you know, my upbringing wasn't like that. I, I often think about my dad's family was uh, broken when he was at a young age. And my mother's family went to church every Sunday. She went to Catholic school, but they never talked about faith in their home. And my upbringing was completely different because of the fire of renewal that blazed through the, the Pittsburgh area here and just that encounter with the Holy Spirit. You know, we had family <laughs> prayer meetings, Bible studies, and Everything we did was ministry, whether we were grocery shopping or, you know, the everyday facets of life were spirit filled because of how my parents gave mm -hmm. themselves and their lives to the Lord. But, you know, I think for those listening who say, well, I want that. I want that for my children. I want to integrate a prayer meeting in our family life. You know, <laughs> what what are some practical ways, some of the treasures that you received in your upbringing, within your family dynamics that, that maybe you could share, something that would inspire others who are saying, I want this, whether it's, you know, with my husband or my wife, or even with a friend, or maybe even a neighbor saying, you know, I, I want to cultivate life in the spirit together. So any, any advice or insight you have, especially for families? Okay. One of the things that I always tell parents, you have to strengthen yourself first, mm. then pass it on. Mm. And it doesn't have to come because I was blessed to be in the center of prayer all the time. But not everybody has that grace. I acknowledge that. And even with my siblings, what I got out of it, that's not what they got. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a way... I always tell people that even with my kids, what I decided to do, to make one night a special night. Mm. That night, I will cook something that we don't eat fried food every day. I will make fried <laughs> food because they love that. Yeah. And, but they know that when after the fried food, that will be prayer. But at the beginning, we will do the rosary. And I teach them what the rosary is all about and do that. I will do that every week because when I take them with me to the prayer group that we used to have on Saturday, for 10 years I was doing it in Queens uh, when they were little. I used to take my babies with me. Mm. And people used to say, oh, you do that. I put them on my lap and then we go. And they learn that way. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect kids. I'm not perfect, but little things that you can, inter, you know, bring in. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna eat if every day nobody's together, but find one day that everybody can be together, and then start with a prayer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Just say thank you, Jesus, for giving us life, for the food that you have given us, for the health you have given us. And then make each one of them say what was their highlight for the week, and then thank God after they say it. Because God is the one that provides. God is the one that gives. And nobody, nothing, no one deserves anything, but it's accepting what God has put in your life. That was the whole thing. And another thing I will tell parents, don't look at what your parents didn't give you. Find out all the resources, all the places that are offering support. Join one of them. Hmm. And that's what I saw that was needed in my parish. And then I invite a couple of them while they're waiting for their children while they were in CCD classes. Instead of they didn't want to go back home, they were just chit-chatting. And then I said, I would like to invite you. Can we reflect on the gospel that you just heard at mass? Because they're always inviting the parents to come with the children Mm -hmm. before going to CCD classes. Because our CCD classes are on Sunday, started with the mass, and they take the children out for their classes. After the mass, those parents sometimes waiting or waiting. So we use those parents, we use that time just to talk with them. What do you think about it? And that's how we become for about 17 years or 20 years that we've been meeting with these parents. About seven of them are still meeting with me on a weekly basis. Amazing. Uh, And their growth gives me joy and then I thank God for their day bringing others to church. They inspire other parents to stick with the coming to church, going back to the sacrament. Some of them even got married. They were not married before. Some of them received, we just received confirmation yet, received confirmation. And it's the power of God's love because when people experience the love of Christ, because no matter what a family is going through, mm. once you do at least one Hail Mary, one hour further together, God is in the midst and things will change. And then you can branch out, you know, little by little to a point that at my kids, I taught them to come to adoration with me. Adoration is my strength. Mm. Darling, but, some. Something you said mm-hmm. before, you, you, mm-hmm. you mentioned, you know, the, the work that you did with your children. And Alicia, you, you said, you know, when you were younger, your family did certain things together. One of the, the big challenges of society right now is the breakdown of the family. I host mm-hmm. another radio show. It's called Italian Impact Weekly. And I say that for a reason. And every guest mm-hmm. we have on there, we ask them, we say, what is a tradition you had growing up? And almost all of them, they say, oh, the Sunday dinner. All of the family would come. We would get together. We'd have a big dinner. And I remember mm-hmm. that. And I mm-hmm. think for people listening, it kind of what you said, darling, something as simple as a regular dinner will mm-hmm. mean a lifetime of memories. Mm-hmm. You might mm-hmm. not think the kids are paying attention. You might not think that matters but you are planting a seed. And when you meet, even if it's one time a week, we said, we're gonna have this special dinner and we're gonna have a nice mm-hmm. dinner and we're gonna have everybody over there. I'm gonna cook something special and we're gonna say mm-hmm. a prayer. That mm-hmm. means so much that you don't see it now. I-, I will tell you one quick thing. When I was a kid, my grandmother used to take me to church every Sunday. To this mm-hmm. day, I can still hear her voice mm-hmm. singing mm-hmm. at mass. Oh. And I will never forget her singing at Mass because it meant so much to me. So I think what you said, for people that are listening, it is that simple. Get your kids, sit down, have a dinner, and just talk with them. Mm -hmm. Talk about your faith. Have a nice dinner. Put the phones down. Give me one hour of your life and just put the phones down. And if you do that, and it's important If it's important to you, 
you'll do it. And if your kids realize that their time is important to you, Mm -hmm. they will appreciate that. You might not think it. You might not see it. But you are planting and cultivating a seed. And that faith is huge because that's why many Catholics don't understand the Eucharist. Because if you're waiting for CCD to completely explain everything, it's really dependent upon your, your, your instructor. They all mean well, but they're all different levels of knowledge. So it's up to the parents to be the first line of education. Mm. So I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah, and you know, I think there's something, darling, in, in what you just shared, Steve, to the practice. You know, no one would just show up to play football or show up as a gymnast or show up to play tennis or, you know, any sport, any musical instrument. No one would show up to a performance or this this moment without having practice, without having studied. And so what you're sharing, just the conversation over the meal and really, darling, the, you know, we talk about like, what are you thankful for? And then we thank God. You're practicing together. You're providing that guidance. And, you know, I remember being a new prayer group leader and I thought, Lord, I've never led a prayer group before. How do I do this? And Mm -hmm. a a Colombian seminarian was walking with me and kind of coaching me. And he said, Alicia, there are two (laughs) things you need to focus on. One, you need to pray in unity in the spirit. So everyone thanking and praising God in unity out loud together. <laughs> Just very simply, he's sharing this. And, um, and he said, and secondly, you really need to focus on fellowship, building relationship outside of the mm-hmm. prayer meeting. And he said, those yeah. two things are critical. And, and later I learned a third and it was Bible study. He shared, he said, you know, we would... We would have a prayer meeting once a week, and then we would have a Bible study. And the Bible study was not like, let's all read this one verse together. It was read the book of Genesis for next week. So that as we entered into life in the spirit in fellowship, as we entered into praying in unity in the spirit at prayer meetings, we were doing it with this beautiful foundation of of the Lord guiding us and leading us and confirming and speaking to us through what we were uh, really learning and taking in in our study of Scripture and the Word of God. But yeah, you know, I think, darling, I think there's something extraordinary about your childhood. And you've shared with me before just some of the, the fruits and the graces of having a father who's a Pentecostal pastor and a mother who's so involved in the Catholic charismatic renewal. What a rich upbringing. What a glorious experience of life in the spirit as a child. And um, even those times of whether it was your father supporting you in your sacramental life or whether it was your family going and bringing friends to Notre Dame to these charismatic conferences. Um, So it's just, it's beautiful to see the fruits of those seeds that were planted in you when you were a child, when you were, you know, when you were a young adult and how you're now pouring back into the youth. And um, for those who maybe haven't encountered the Haitian renewal, I highly recommend if you can go just be a guest. There is a conference once a year. It is a taste of heaven. Even if you don't speak Haitian Creole or French, go. <laughs> The music is glorious. So in, in prayer groups, oftentimes the person who is kind of listening to the Holy Spirit and helping to conduct is called an MC. It's a very maybe Anglo word, but in the Haitian renewal, that person is called the animator. And that person's listening to the Holy Spirit, working along with the worship team. And the worship is just so glorious. It's kind of like stepping into the waterfall of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Beautiful grace, even. I remember my first experience of seeing just people from the Haitian Renewal were moving from one room to another in a conference. And it wasn't just a a movement or people walking quietly. Everyone was singing and dancing. (laughs) And and, darling, I I see that so much in you and your mom, even in in your children there. The joy of the Lord is made manifest in your life, in your ministry, and and beautifully in the Haitian renewal. So we just, we want to thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for sharing your testimony and really the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. 
Thank Dar- you. Yeah, darling, can, <laughs> can we ask you to pray for all who are listening, just as the Spirit leads you, that the graces that you've received would be poured out upon all who are joining us today? Lord Jesus, we want to thank you and glorify your name for your presence in our life. We ask you, Father, for all those who are listening, all those who will listen to these few words that I try to share with them, that should touch their life, that not look at what happened, what their past is. Past is past. Yesterday is done. But today is a new day, a new beginning, a new birth a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. May they feel the power of God. May they recognize that every day is a special day because God wakes them up. May they recognize that everything that they're doing, doing it for the glory of God, God will manifest. Even in their children, there's no such thing as children who are lost because God has given you a child, that child is blessed from your womb. And we ask in Jesus to touch, to magnify, to close. May your name be glorified in every family. May they recognize that you are present, Lord, that is all that they need. Everything that they have is because you have provided for them. And what they do not have is not yet received, but by your glory, they will be satisfied. May your name be glorified, Lord. May you touch, Lord Jesus, all those who are feel lonely, all, all those who feel lost, all those who don't see any need for it, all those who do not recognize that you love them regardless of their past, their present time right now, you love them immensely. And they haven't even recognized that what you have prepared for them, everything will be all right in Jesus' name. May your name be glorified, Lord Jesus, in all the families. May they be touched, Lord their neighborhoods, their friends, all those who are no longer admitting that they are Catholic, you, Lord Jesus, can change heart. You can change mind. You can change all everything. We're asking you, humbly asking you, Father, touch them. Bring your grace. Make them recognize their grace. They are gifts, Lord Jesus. Not to look at somebody else's gift, but they are gifts. Because we are all given a lot of gifts that we haven't tapped on. Holy Spirit, go upon them, purify them, strengthen them. We ask you this, Mary, envelop your children under your mantle. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you very much, darling. We sincerely appreciate your time with us. Um, Very insightful. Again, as always, if you want to learn more about the organization, please go out to PentecostTodayUSA.org. Again, that's PentecostTodayUSA.org. Alicia, any final thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think even if maybe we aren't close to New York City and able to go to this conference, there are prayer groups and prayer meetings all across the nation Uh, with people who are involved in the Haitian renewal. So again, if you are interested, we will go ahead and drop in the comments a link out to the Haitian renewal website. And you can always go to our website, just click on connect, look at the database and search for Haitian prayer groups. Um, They are all over the nation. So again, thank you all for being with us. We're so humbled to seek the Lord together. We're so humbled to learn more about the work of the Holy Spirit in our nation together. May the Lord bless you and hold you close to his heart as you go out. Amen. Amen.